everybody. Um, my name is Vivian Melder, and today in Beth Studio we have the Canadian actors Deborah Kara Unger and the German director Deborah. Deborah, so sorry. Okay, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and R.P. Cole, a German director. Carl. Carl, a yeah. German director. Mm -hmm. uh, Deborah has acted in numerous films and television dramas, including the award-winning Bangkok Hilton. That's really strange. And uh, with Nicole in that, Kidman in, yeah, in 89, right? I was a kid then. That was so strange. You would pick that out of my vita <laughs> when I've started the game with Michael Douglas, Hurricane with Denzel Washington, Sophia Loren, Sir Ian McKellen. But you pick a little mini-series when I was a kid. Well, <laughs> thank you, Vivian. No problem. You're really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... RP is acting in more than 60 projects in television, theater, productions, and Whoa, is a wow. teacher in, in film schools in Hanover and Berlin. So this year in the Black Knights Film Festival, uh, your film, A Thought of Ecstasy, is featured. So, hello and guten Tag. Guten Tag. To both of you. It's German. <laughs> <laughs> I got that bit. I don't get the Canadian greeting. Oh, okay. So, sorry. That's um, the Canadian greeting. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hello. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, A Thought of Ecstasy has a slogan, Love is immortal, seduction is inevitable, revenge is irresistible. So, what can the audience ex expect from this film? Golly. Hmm. They can expect to go on a very non-linear uh, journey, inspired by one of the French philosophers, Georges Bataille, and also uh, inspired by current events. It uh, was foreshadowing the current events of the temperature in the United States with right now with the Trump era being mm -hmm. ushered in, uh, the submission of women, the and uh, and also it was foreshadowing RP and his fellow co-writer and producer Torsten Norman were foreshadowing the hashtag Me Too mm -hmm. Fuhrer uh, that has now most recently been come to the attention of the worldwide media. Mm -hmm. And they can expect a, a an, er an erotic and alarmingly uh, innovative journey into the consciousness of a man who's wasting himself in order to be, to remain vivid and alive, perhaps. Right. RP? Yes, uh, of course it's a film with a story, but you don't have to understand the story at yeah. all to understand the film, I think. It's a film uh, you can communicate in a way with the picture, with the atmosphere, with the soundscape, with the characters. And so sometimes maybe the audience could be lost in a moment, but I think... It's supposed the next, to be. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be. In the next moment you will be catched by a, by a moment, by a scene. And yeah, for me, it's much more like a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see what you want and you have to communicate with this picture and you to grab your own idea behind this. Of course, uh, we have an idea uh, of the film and what's about what the narrative is. <laughs> yes, what the, the narrative is. The surface narr narrative is, it's the, it's the terrain, it's the subterrain mm -hmm. of, of the of the surface that resonates so deeply and is and and complicates and stabs different uh, areas of one's emotions and subconsciousness and I do want to say that the soundscape mm -hmm. uh, the sound is a character in and of itself throughout whether it's a voice over mm -hmm. that intertwines uh, and is interwoven with the soundtrack mm -hmm. which is a really cool soundtrack mm -hmm. even if you close your eyes and don't look at the visuals yeah. they exist within the sound mm -hmm. right so as you mentioned the movie is uh, quite innovative and controversial in the world of conventional uh, cinema were you not afraid at any stage of the production that it was going to be too much you no. see what's happening in the news? Do <laughs> <laughs> you think there's anything too much about what's really happening in real life? Mm. I mean, this is a poetic metaphor. It very subtly alludes to what is existing, the, the shocking uh, abuse of, of certain human rights and entitlements and um, the fractured state that we're existing in right now mm -hmm. and, our, and our need to seek wellness it's these seeds are planted throughout and they they're not didactically planted rp is very subtle 
in his choices of how to suggest um, and in, in fact foreshadow and anticipate uh, where we are right now with this mm -hmm. film. And George Bataille was a billion years ago. That mm -hmm. was, in that sense, certain types of controversial philosophies aren't at all controversial. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a tad of a a tad of a homage, perhaps, mm -hmm. to a certain yeah. way of thinking. Yeah, and I have to add, as an artist, I think it's not good to have the audience at all time in your mind, in your mm -hmm. head, and to think about this, oh, maybe is it too much or not? No, you have to uh, believe in your own idea when you are making a film. And of course, I had the freedom because I produced it together with my colleague Thorsten mm -hmm. Neumann and also uh, Deborah is uh, on board as an executive producer and so we had the freedom, the artistic freedom to do what we are thinking it is the right mm -hmm. in the moment. Maybe in a year when you are asking me one more this question, maybe I would ask, uh, answer, okay, maybe on this uh, moment uh, it had to be better to go this way or this way and maybe we will cut the Everybody film. thinks. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe, we will, we I will think see. every director thinks that. I mean, every yeah. actor thinks that. But speaking in terms of um, a little bit bringing it more down to earth, was it? How was the casting process like for this film? You mean down to earth? Down to earth, as in we're discussing. Did you see the film? Yes. Uh huh. Yes, I did. Okay. Cool. Um, but in, in purely in terms of us discussing the meaning behind it and the and the foreshadowing and it, and its place in society, I I was more wondering more about the film production side, and just in terms of the casting process, how how did that work out? Uh. Deborah was uh, when you came on board from the uh, very beginning. Whatever yes. you asked. <laughs> it was easy. Uh, it you was want to be part of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was, I was uh, yeah. Bedways as a is one of RP's previous films. I was such a huge fan of it. It was mm. also co-produced with Torsten Neumann, mm -hmm. and uh, so I said yes, absolutely. Yeah, and the other. Um, the two other actresses came on board in a not usual way, mm. uh, I would say. It was not the way to ask uh, the casting, a casting director, and the mm. casting director asked an agent yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. So, no, it was much more open and open casting. And, and spontaneous. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. But just like uh, I've, uh, you know, Sean Baker's The Florida Project, it wasn't a normal casting session. He got his lead actress inspired by a a female, a woman that he saw on Instagram, mm. and he said like, hey, it, it wouldn't go out of his head. Mm -hmm. So eventually, uh, he was asking casting people to find someone with that essence, and then mm. he thought, why not just find her? Yeah. And cast her. So RP, in a similar way of spontaneous casting, yeah. I don't mean to speak on your behalf so much, but I understand that that was the beauty of it, because these two women had to be so specific. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you, only you would know, and you knew. Yeah. And uh, I was on board for the first time, and when I, <laughs> I wrote down the first idea of the film, it was not this fiction film. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I had in my mind to make a kind of an essay or documentary mm. with experimental moments, and it, then it developed. Uh, I developed it to a fiction film, and so I was in the in the papers as a protagonist in the essay, and so I had to do the job also mm. as an actor You're for right. the main character in the fiction film. So I was uh, I had to do it. So there was no chance to get out. Yeah, right. Um, as I mentioned before, we are um, all BFM students. So for the last question, I would really love to hear if you have any advice for young filmmakers who wish to be as innovative and brave as you have been with this project? No. No? <laughs> you don't have any advice, are you? <coughs> that, would, that, would, that might take. I just spent an hour and a half yesterday talking about right. various aspects of the industry. Everyone is a snowflake, everyone is precious, mm -hmm. and I think just to honor yourself, mm -hmm. fearlessly honor yourself, listen to others, be kind to others. There's many people that can offer uh, experience, but your own experience is what is all that is essential, mm -hmm. respectfully. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think it's good when you are going to a film school that you 
please take all what you can at the mm -hmm. school. All of these things uh, where you are thinking, oh, what a bullshit, I don't need it in the future, or what is it, or what a uh, weird idea. No, try it mm -hmm. and to learn from it and take 1% uh, mm -hmm. from your teacher and this percent you will develop uh, on your own way and um, make friends also in film school to have a team on board for mm -hmm. your first projects after the school or next to the school and use the equipment from the school because it's... No, uh, you're being really detailed. <laughs> <laughs> I was just being uh, glib. I work, I work as a teacher at yeah, film school and so I have some, I, some I rules. Checklist. <laughs> checklist. I studied for four years at the National Institute of Dramatic Art in mm -hmm. Sydney, Australia. And I was there with Kate Blanchett and you work your ass off yeah. and you, you learn every technique that you can um, and we learn in every department as well, yeah. not just in front mm. on stage or mm. in front of the camera. We learn every department. I went to school with you know, an Oscar winning Catherine Martin. She's won mm. four or five Oscars, I think, by now for her, her design. Mm -hmm. So you, you are a collective. There's, there's work very, very hard and humbly. Mm -hmm. And within that, honor your voice. Uh, that's but I, when I was being glib, I didn't mean work hard and learn all the practical things you can. Mm -hmm. But within this, honor your voice, mm -hmm. honor your gut. Right. It's easy to feel. Everyone is unique. It's and there's no place for competition. Mm -hmm. You can never. That's really important. It's really important to have a sisterhood, a brotherhood, mm -hmm. a community feeling, and just know there's no sense in competing because. Mm -hmm you're the only Vivian that there will ever be. Yeah. And your vision, there's only your set, your set of eyes no one else can see through. And your voice is essential, and every story matters. That's really good to hear on, on my part, I'd say. But OK. <laughs> so that's all of my questions for you guys. Uh, thank you so much for being here and, and talking with us. It was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for tuning in.